this video, we're going to be talking about another internal control called petty cash and what it's used for and how companies would um, journalize transactions that come from petty cash. Petty cash is used as a control for cash because it's cash that you have on hand that you can use to pay for small expenditures. Like maybe you have a little cash um, zipper pouch or something like that where you keep $200 or, or something like that. Then you can go in and pay for small things, small office supplies, or that type of thing, where you don't have access to a large amount of cash at any one time. Controls that you can still have over the petty cash fund are things like a custodian. So one person would be assigned that controls this petty cash and, and reviews all the tickets. There's also something called an impressed system that typically um, petty cash will follow. The impressed system simply means when it has, if you have a petty cash fund that has $200 in the fund, it stays at $200. So when transactions affect the petty cash fund, they're actually affecting cash, not petty cash. And we'll see what that transaction looks like here in just a second. Also, in the petty cash fund, when money is paid with from cash, then there should be a ticket in that pouch or, or box or whatever the money is kept in that signifies money was, was used to purchase something. So the first thing we have to do when we're interested in using a petty cash fund is to establish the fund. So you determine what amount you want held in the petty cash fund, 200, 300, 500, 1,000, whatever the case may be, and you make a transaction. So the money is gonna come out of your cash account and into the petty cash fund or petty cash. So the transaction would look like this. We're gonna credit the cash account and for whatever the amount is, and we're going to debit the petty cash fund or petty cash for that same amount. Now we have effectively created the petty cash fund. So now that we've established the petty cash fund, we can actually start making um, purchases from that fund. So for example, here we have a petty cash or receipt bag that has $78 in cash, and it shows tickets or receipts for delivery expense of $22, postage, postage expense for $42, supplies expense for $42, and miscellaneous expenses of $16. The original balance was $200. So for me, the easiest way to, to, to journalize a transaction based on these expenses is to say, well, I started with $200 and I only have $78 left. So I'm going to have to put back in my bag $122. That's how much cash, no matter what the receipts add up to, I've got to get $122 back in that bag. That's because it's an impressed system. It has to stay at $200 at all times. So that $122 is gonna come out of my cash account. I'm going to credit cash for $122. And now I'm just gonna list all those expenses and record them in my books. Delivery expense, postage, supplies, and miscellaneous. In this case, we're happy because they actually all add up to $122, so everything seems to be, to be fine. But what I want you to note here is there is no entry in this journal, this journal entry made to petty cash. So the only time you will see a journal entry made to petty cash is when you create it or if you ever change the balance that's in it. Notice we are crediting petty cash. We don't credit, I mean we credit cash. We do not credit petty cash. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's an impressed system. But what happens if the cash receipts in the bag don't match um, the cash that's missing? Then what do we do? Well, here we have this, a different little scenario here. We still have $78 in cash, and we're supposed to have $200, and then we have our expenses. So we, the same scenario, we still know we're going to have to credit cash for $122. That's how much we need to put back in our bag. However, when we look at the, the expenses that we've got here, they only add up to $120. So we actually need a debit of $2 to make this journal entry balance. And this is called cash short and over. Okay, so it can be a debit or a credit to cash short and over. In this particular instance, we need a debit. Okay, so what happens here is it acts like an expense. It's short. Our bag was short. So if you have a balance in your cash short and over account at the end of the period, and it's a debit balance, then that's going to act like an expense on the income statement. If your cash short and over has a credit balance, it's going to act like a revenue. Well, let's take one more example. Here we have our petty cash fund once again. 
we have $78 in cash and it's supposed to be $200. So we know, once again, that we're going to have to credit cash for $122. But when we look at our expenses, they actually add up to $124, our receipts. So in this case, we're actually over. So we need a credit in this case to make it balance, to get that credit side up to $124. So at this instance, if these were two different transactions, our cash short and over balance would now have a zero balance, which is technically what we want to happen. Don't forget, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, and questions and comments are always welcome.